Good evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to tonight's midweek Bible study at Bergrass Missionary Baptist Church. On behalf of Pastor Smizer, we welcome you tonight and invite you to get your pencils, the papers, and whatever instruments you de decide to join us with your scripture. Tonight's uh, teacher will be Reverend Keith Williams. We're still studying about the prophets this particular quarter, so we invite you to tune in, take notes, ask questions, write them down, and we'll be glad to try to get you an answer in return. At this time, we're going to turn the meeting, the study back over to Reverend Williams as he comes to present this week's study about prophets this week. Reverend Williams. Thank you, Reverend Dow. Mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone. This evening, we travel to Judah to learn about one of the youngest kings that was ever king of Judah. His name is Josiah. And if we were to look in the scriptures, we would say it said Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign as king of Judah. Now, we know that from past lessons that Israel had been split into a northern kingdom, which was called Israel, and a southern kingdom, which was called Judah which goes all the way back to Solomon and the division between Solomon's son and others who had a quarrel and they end up splitting the country about where you should worship God. As the years went by, we see a great deterioration from the Word of God. Idol worshiping became a passion. In fact, it got to be such a passion that some people were even sacrificing their own children to idols. We see here that uh, Manassas sacrificed his children, and he was grandfather to uh, uh, so, uh, Josiah, and he had done these things, and he had done other wicked things. He had let them or permit them to build shrines and groves to idols. So all these things had come down, but still we had to remember that God had said to them when he first took them as his people, that you should have no other God before me. And if you did decide to have some other God before me, there will be a consequence for that, a dire consequence. And the dire consequence was slavery from other countries. So we see that the slaves from other countries included Assyria. And the Assyrians were wicked as they could be, and they had no rash or no sympathy for anyone. In fact, Judah was being subservient to, uh, to the Assyrians when Josiah became king. They let him reign, but he was only allowed to go so far. But still, we see in this lesson that he used what he had that he could do better and wake up the eyes of the people to follow God. So if you will, please with me, go to 2 Kings chapter 22. And I'm going to butcher a few of the names here of these people. But there are two names I want you to keep in mind. I want you to keep in mind the name Imam who was Josiah's father, who only served as king of Judah for two years before he was assassinated. And I want you to keep in mind the prophetess, who we will see this woman prophet being the one that they go to to authenticate that what they had found was really the book of the law. And her name is Holdah. Holdah is a woman that we know very little about except for in this chapter 22. So please go with me, 2 Kings chapter 22, and let us start with the lesson, which starts with verse number, I'm going to start with verse number 15. This is Holda speaking. And she said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon this inhabitants. Therefore, even all the words that the book which the king of Judah has read. Now, what did the king of Judah read? Josiah had wanted to reestablish the temple. He wanted it to be put back into its holy form. So he had commissioned some men to go into the temple and to clean it and to also to clean it spiritually as well as physically. And he wanted them to clean it so that they could come again and worship God in the temple. But as they were cleaning, a great discovery was made a discovery of the book of the law. They had been given the law way back in Exodus. 
If you will, with, would you please go back to Exodus chapter 20. We know what Exodus chapter 20 is famous for. It's famous for what? The Ten Commandments. Yes, it's famous for the Ten Commandments. But once you say, we say commandments, we should think about this as really what it was. It was a covenant. And a covenant is made by at least two individuals. No one person can make a covenant. It has to be at least two. It can be many as thousands. It can be hundreds of thousands. But they make this promise. And as we see in Exodus chapter 20, a promise was made. Chapter 20, let's verse number, start with verse number 18 after the Ten Commandments. And all the people saw the thunder and the lightning and the noise and the trumpet and the mount smoking. And the people saw it and they removed and stood far off. And they said to Moses, speak thou with us and we will hear. But let us not, let God, let not God speak with us, at least we die. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, for God has come to prove you that his fear may be before your eyes, and that ye sin not. And the people stood off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. God has sent for Moses to come up to the mountain to give him the Ten Commandments. And the people saw the thunder and the lightning and this great smoke, and for Moses to disappear in the mountain, and they became frightful, fearful. But Moses said, God has chose this, this way of doing things to test you, to see if you will keep your word, your promise to serve him. Now, down through the years, there were some that did keep their promise to God. We know that David did. We know that Solomon did. But there are others that did not keep their promise to serve God. As I mentioned Manasseh earlier, and also Amon is his son. Now, they had backslid. They had done these evil things. But this time, God had one more person to come forward to try to keep the word of God. And that is who we talk about, Josiah. So back up with me as we go back again. I'm sorry I go back and forth, but there's so much here. I want us to get all of it. Go back again to chapter 22, 2 Kings chapter 22. Go to verse 1. Give you time to find it. 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 1. Some of these idol worshippers had even had the nerve to go into the temple and set up sacrifices to their own gods in the temple of God, which was terrible. And we have to think about it. Sometimes we do the same thing. We backslide and do things contrary to what the Lord has asked us to do. But 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 1. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedidiah, the daughter of Adahai Abashas. And he did that which was right in the sight of God, and walked in all the ways of David his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. And it came to pass in the eighteenth year, the king, year of the king Josiah, that the king sent Shaphan, the son of, uh, uh, like I said, I'll butcher this, Alzaziah, and the son of Meshamdain, the scribe to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to Holda, the high, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Hilakai, the high priest, that he may summon the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. And he was saying to them basically, take up a collection so that we can restore the house of the Lord. How old was he when he started? He reigned eight years old. And I ask this question to you. Can an eight-year-old rule the United States? He can, but he has to have someone that's helping him that really has the knowledge of doing, being able to do that. And in Josiah's case, he had two prophets to help him, which we hear a little, very little about. He had Jeremiah to help him, and we also he has Zephaniah to help him. So he was able to be the king and have the wisdom of a grown man through them. Now we see that's when he was eight years old he became king. But what happens when he's 12 years old, okay? 
what we see here when he became 12 years old. Let me go to the right place. I'm sorry. Uh, let's go down to verse number 11. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law that he rent his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest and Amachan, Amachan, the son of Saphan, and Archibon, and he commanded others to go and to inquire of the Lord if this was true. When he read the words, and what the word said was this, that if you sin against me, if you go against my word, if you keep on doing this, there are going to be consequences that you're not going to like. And those consequences was that other countries invaded them and took them away captive into Babylonia. But that was still yet to come. But when Josiah received the book of the law, it had been hid. I don't know if it was hid on purpose or had been just disregarded, but God made it possible for him to see the book of the law, and therefore he read it, and when he read it, it said he rent his clothes. That's a sign of grief. When he found out that they had been doing contrary things to what God would have them to do. So therefore he was very grieved with that, and he wanted them to return back to God and to return to God completely, not just temporarily. You know, when we read Judges, we go through the book of Judges after Joshua dies, that the people weighed back and forth. Sometimes they would serve God, sometimes they would rebel, and then they would call upon God to, to forgive them and to rescue them from the situation they were in. So we see that happens even today. But as I said in the beginning, a covenant. They had made a covenant with Jesus, well, I'm sorry, with God, at the mount when Moses went up and got the commandments. They had made a covenant. They had made a promise. And it's the same thing that we do today. Here recently, I've seen more new and used cars in the street than I've ever seen in my life. More temporary tags on cars. People are buying cars left and right. Okay? Now, when they go in to buy a car, whatever dealership it is, they come to an agreement. They don't call it a covenant, but they come to an agreement. They come to an agreement on what the price will be. They will come to an agreement of how much they will pay down. They come to an agreement on how much miles, if they lease a car, how many miles they put on it a year. All those agreements are made. And those agreements are made so that there would be established the law that they would go by. When you don't keep your law, you're in the bargain, things happen. There are repercussions. The same thing that we see here with Josiah and Judah. There were repercussions. If I don't make the mortgage payment on my house, there are repercussions on that. If I don't make the car payments, there are repercussions. And when I say repercussions, things are taken away or taken back. And I would be even le left with a stain of debt that I, it says at the credit union or at the credit bureau, unpaid, which is a black mark. We see here that the people of Israel were getting a black mark against themselves year and year again by not following God and doing what Christ had asked them to do. He is the one that brought them out of Egypt, so therefore he is the one that they owe all favor to. And when they bowed and said, Our Father, they were talking to God and keeping the promise to him. As we look here more at the lesson, let me go on with the verses now. I just want to bring that out. And when we look at the Bible, and when to back up what I said about Jeremiah, if you read Jeremiah, the first chapter and the first verse, you find that it said that he served under Josiah the king. But going on here, verse 17, they ask what had happened, and Hodiah said, it's because you have not fulfilled your promise. And this is how she put it. She says, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. He says, you know, I've given you more times than enough. You know, there were times when the finance company would call me and said, Keith, you owe us money. You're two months behind. And I said, I'm going to catch up. I'm going to pay it when I can. And I, if I further, fall further behind, then they would say, we have no other choice but to repossess what you have or to call your contract in. The contract was being called in on Judah because they had sinned and turned from God and gone to serve Baal and other gods that were no gods at all. 
when you see those names listed as God, remember it's always a small g because they're not gods at all. And that's what some of the things that Jeremiah had been telling them. We also know that Jeremiah had been telling them that they were going to go into captivity and go ahead and surrender to go into captivity because you're going because you have done things to provoke God and you have not turned away from those things. Verse 18, But the king of Judah would sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus said to him, Thus says the God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard, because thy heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before me, before the Lord, when thou hearest what I spake against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and has rent thy, thy clothes, and has wept before me, I also have heard thee, said the Lord. Behold, therefore I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered unto thy grave in the peace, and thy eyes shall not see all the evil which I shall bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. This was the word that the prophecies had showed them that uh, these were the things that were going to happen. But he said, but wait, she said, but wait you, Josiah, because you have humbled yourself. And that's the same thing with me with the finance company. I humble myself. I'm going to pay you as soon as I can. If I said, I don't care nothing about you, hang up the phone, they have no choice but do what they need to do to receive the money that was due them. Josiah humbled himself not only just for himself, he humbled himself for the people, that the people may be spared. And as we see when they were carrying the captivity in the Babylonia, the Babylonians did not spare their temple. They tore their temple down. They took all the intelligent, as we see from Daniel, he took all the intelligent people out and left the poor there to live in the land. They did things to put a tax upon those that were still in the land. All those things came about because of disobedience and not following God. So we know that there is a consequence when we don't follow God and not keep his word. Please turn back with me to Exodus chapter 24, verse 3. Exodus chapter 24, verse 3. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, Here's where the contract is signed. I want you to know, this is where the ink is put on the contract, in my handwriting and your handwriting. All the words which the Lord has said, we will do. That was their promise. Whatever the Lord has said for us to do, we will do. But they did not fulfill that contract. In fact, they didn't go a few, a few more miles down the road where they're complaining to Moses and talking about stoning him because they say that they wanted this and they didn't have that and Egypt was so much better. We're not to do that. We're not to go back on the contract, on the promise we make to God. It's wonderful to know that he had left the word written down here for us so that we will know what he would want us to do and how he wants us to live. Verse 5. 4, I'm sorry. And Moses, wrote, um, and Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men to the children of Israel which offer, offered burnt offerings and sacrifices, peace offerings of ox unto the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it on a basin and half of the blood he sprinkled it on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the ordinance of the people. And they said, all the Lord has said, we will do and be obedient. That's the promise they made. Now you said, well, that was just one generation. Forty years later, this is another generation, another generation. But you know what? A contract is a contract. When you make a contract with God, it's not one that you can break. It's not one that you can go to a lawyer and come out without having to pay consequences for it. Is a contrast that lasts, contract that lasts, 
as a contrast that I'm thankful that it lasts because I want his contract that he made with me that he would give me eternal life. I want it to last. I don't want it to be a short contract that only lasts for a couple of months or years. It's a contract of promise. And it's a contract of promise of what I will do on the basis of what God has done and what he's going to do. As I come to conclusion, I'd like to uh, say this. Josiah matured. As I said, he was eight years old when he became king. We find out in another verse, it says that when he was 12 years old, he became more interested in the word of God and wanting to be able to fulfill the word of God and to try to draw the people back to God. He wanted to draw them back so that they would not be perished or that they will not lose their chance to be in the kingdom, not just heavenly kingdom, but earthly kingdom also. Let us turn to one more place, and then I'll be finished. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 28. And I know it's a little bit long, but there's more there. there. It's, you know, when a lawyer is building his case, he will try to give you all the information he possibly can to build his case. And God is building his case against Judah and against Israel also, the northern kingdom, because they were the ones that were going to captivity first, and then Judah. He was building his case to show what they had done wrong and how they had turned their backs from God. So Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 28. Moses is reminding them, before they cross over to the promised land, their promises of what they have promised they're going to do to God, they're going to do. Verse 1. And it shall come to pass that if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God and observe and do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. That's God's promise to them. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field, and blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kale, and the flocks, and of the sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket, and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall be thou when thou goest out. And the Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face, and they shall come out against thee one way, and shall flee before thee seven ways. Were the enemy fleeing from Josiah and Judah? No, because they did not keep the covenant, because they did not keep the word. In fact, they're the ones that end up fleeing. Jehoiakim, who's his son, ends up fleeing, trying to get away from uh, their enemies. The Lord shall command his blessings upon thee, verse number 8, in the, thy storehouse, in all that thou settest, th settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto him, as he has sworn in thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. I'll stop right there. So basically what we see here is that the same thing that held true in Josiah's day holds true today that we are to keep God's commandments. We're to keep his words. We're not to say, oh, this is a new time, a new age. Some people try to play in it. Oh, things are different now. They aren't different with God. And he's the one that counts. He is the one that we look for. So when we see this lesson, it says a prophet of wisdom. It is really talking about a prophet's this, because she's the one that told them, this is the word of God, and this is word is really true. But we're studying the prophets, so that's the reason they use that title. So we see here tonight that we're to obey. We're not to let anything disturb us or keep us from following what God has to say because he is the one that we all, all must all answer to. He is the one we must all look forward to because what he promises, he delivers. When we sign the contract with him, it is a solid contract. It's a con contract that, set, that, is so, that is signed out of love, not out of frustration, not out of foolishness, but out of love, and we're to listen and obey his contract. As we wake up in the morning, when our eyes wake up, from that point on, we have a contract with the Lord 
in the daylight, in the nighttime, and how we're to live. So we leave, we leave you with this, a prophet of wisdom. We're supposed to be Christians and want to be Christians of wisdom. We want to be, obey and follow what God has said. Moses said that God had come down to test them, to see if they really would do what they said they would do. And we see that that's what we want to do. We want to do what God has told us to do and live the way we should. So thank you for joining us this evening. I know I covered a lot of ground, but you go back and look at um, your, your own self, and you will find that there's some very interesting things here in 2 Kings chapter 22 that you should read and see how the Josiah, even as a young boy, turned his heart to God and how the prophets, Jeremiah and Zephaniah, helped him in his job as being king of Judah. So thank you very much, and let us close with evening prayer. Reverend Dow, would you lead us in prayer this evening? And once again, we'd like to thank Reverend Williams for tonight's lesson. It's interesting, the life of the prophets. Mm -hmm. Most of the prophets, if not all of the prophets, were men and women. We had Huldah tonight, who was known to be a prophetess. Mm -hmm. And the Bible speaks of very few women who were leaders, yet and still she was a prophetess who dwelt in the college in Jerusalem. She was a studier, so we should always study God's word. Remember that the message was from God to the people. And most of the time when the prophets were speaking, they would preface their speeches with, Thus saith the Lord. And that's what we've got to remember. Uh, Reverend Williams covered us a, a lot of ground tonight, as he said, and we thank him for tonight's lesson. Be with us on Sunday morning, if you will. Mm -hmm. We'll be right here in the sanctuary. Plenty good room in my Father's kingdom, yes. so come and be with us. Mm -hmm as we close out tonight's lesson. Mm -hmm. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, again for tonight. We ask your blessings upon those, O oh God, who have tuned in to be with us, and those who are here in the sanctuary, and those by way of the internet. We pray that something was said or done to help them along the way. Help them to understand, we dear, dear Lord, that a prophet is an important person because he has a message from God to the people, and then he says, Thus saith the Lord. Keep us now as we go down from this place. Bless us. Bring us safely to our journey's end. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for joining us.